This is Talk of Asian Marketing with a special emphasis on localized Chinese consumer behavior. Our website is ccc.qbook.tv, where you can find other audio and video episodes with photos, links, and information related to today's conversation. Subscribe to leave comments and access research episodes with applied topics and research reports. Great. So, welcome to Shanghai, one of Shanghai's largest silk markets. And、uh, we're just outside. This is a great place for tourists and even locals, of course, to come here. But I have to say, during the day, it gets real busy, particularly with tourists. And this is, of course, how we found it. My wife checked it out in the guidebook, and then we came、uh, over to have a look because we're kind of interested in the silk side of things. So, let's go take a look inside, see how it all works in there. You can walk up in there. Yeah, let's just walk in. Just like... right ahead then. Okay, nice.、It's、real kind of early. The market hasn't really picked up too much right now, so there's just、uh, us really and a few other early bird shoppers here. This is what、uh, around 9:30, 10 in the morning. If you come here in the afternoon, you'll find it's absolutely packed out, particularly with the tourists getting right in here.、And、you can see all these lovely stalls here. The old classical silk right over here on the right. And then coming in, yeah, you can see a few ladies. There is, a, I think this looks like one customer just in the front here. The thing I love, you know, Clyde, is that little bit. You must just just get a hold of that bit at the back. If you lift it up just a tiny bit, you'll see. What they do is they string up a curtain at the back, and then when you want to try on your clothes, you just dive in behind this curtain. And the only thing that gives it away is a changing room. Is usually you see it wriggling away. And you know, kind of, someone's in there just trying on their clothes. It's real inventive, real practical.、It、gives someone a little bit of privacy while they try on their clothes. You can see this lady here. Oh, you mean back there? They just jump behind there and try it on. That's it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And sometimes、yeah. they even just make a little circle of it right in the middle of the、uh, store. Yeah, it's real fun. Over here on the right, we've got、uh, the suiting. So people are walking right in. You've got the. Female side taken care of. You got the male side side get taken care of. Look at all this lovely, lovely suiting here. So, it started off as a silk market, and then it sort of migrated out into all sorts of other options as time has gone on. So, as I say, here we've got that little store we've just looked at. There's the male suiting, and most of them now have moved into tailoring as well. Because people have said, "Hey, you know, it's great. You come and buy your silk, you buy your suiting, but then what the hell are you going to do with it? You want to get it turned into something real nice." So they've also have all the tailoring going on. Usually that's off-site, so this is very much the storefront. Then out back or close by, they've got all the tailors working away. And some of the side streets just round here, you look through the door, you see the guys sewing away. Nice ties here. Perhaps we'll have to come back and pay a little visit. Last time I was here, there was a whole bundle of ties outside. Real great value, just a few U.S. dollars. Feel was great. Quality of the finish was great. The lady was real nice. She started off some ridiculous price. I bargained her right down. I say for a few dollars, I got something that just looked original. You know, Clyde, it was a real,、so、real have, nice. Everything here are individually owned shops. That's right. We're just looking at lots of individual boutiques here. So you mill right in. We've already passed what one, two, three. We've already passed about seven, eight boutiques just walking right in here now. And we're in this lovely central lobby, and you can see all the models outside here, giving people a little bit of inspiration about what they can turn their their silk, their fabric into. It's real nice. I think we've chosen a great time to come here just to move around, haven't we? <laughs> It's a pity we couldn't come back、uh, later in the afternoon, but hey, early enough not to be crowded in, right? Yeah, yeah. Hey, we need this side, not the other side. And go up to the next floor. See you again. So I don't care too much if the cutting isn't great and the finish isn't quite right, and 
and so on. So here, you've got to be careful what you get. That's right, you've got to be real careful. You've got to talk to them a little bit, show that you really want something done right. If you come back and it's not quite right, you know, the seams are not sewn quite properly or, you know, it doesn't fit quite right, you just roll right in, you say, you, straight up front. You've usually had to pay a bit of a deposit, so of course, I wouldn't say they've got you, but, you know, you're not going to get away with uh, not paying. But then, usually, if you're fairly insistent, Last time I bought a leather jacket, in fact, the store behind me used to be a leather store. I bought a leather jacket, came back, sleeves weren't quite Which right. Which was last year, wasn't it? Yeah, and then they uh, replaced the sleeves, it looked real nice. So these stores but, have a high turnover then? Yeah, yeah, I'm sure that there must be a bit of turn in here. It's hard with all these other ones to know what was here last year, because a lot, you know, they look pretty the same. All the little boutiques, got some pre-made clothes, like the, the one behind us, the a lot of pre-made stuff behind you but um, that here is a little bit more of the exception rather than the rule you can see these these ladies fondling away all these lovely dresses now what were you saying about the history of the market so the history it basically started off as a silk market this is my understanding it started as a silk market so traders would bring their silks in here and then slowly they started to add other fabrics as well. So as we've seen, as we've walked in, we've got the silk, we've got some of the suiting. You just pan a little bit right in a minute and what we'll see is you've got leather as well. So that's uh, a whole another fabric. And then as tourism's grown, so they started to open up to do the whole uh, made-to-measure tailoring business as well. So that's uh, a real step-by-step -step movement from you know the basic product as I love to say right into service as well. Well it reminds me what Hong Kong we used to go to Hong Kong a lot for a lot of people in the 70s 80s going to Hong Kong to get tailored suits tailored jackets. That's right you, you, you see you see everyone here from those guys that look very obvious as businessmen right through to guys that maybe even students who have just you know they're on a gap year or they're swinging through and, uh, I saw cashmere back there. Didn't you get a cashmere jacket here? I, I couldn't resist it. Well, my wife sort of said, hey, we should get one. You know, the price is so good. You know that normal, that normal thing. I'm sure you have it, Clyde. You know, your wife says, hey, what a bargain. And you start to buy something that you never dreamed that you were going to ever buy. <laughs> so last time we ended up with a little bit of cashmere. We went outside. In fact, we bought the fabric just outside. So that traditional model bought the fabric, brought it here, the guys started to tailor it up. They did a real nice job, it worked really well. We had a fitting, two fittings, first fitting, a little rough, marked out the changes, came back a little later and it looked really, really nice, really happy with the job. So yeah, I'd be a lo loyal customer for that store. Made a referral already, brought in another American couple into that store, so that's great. I'm not sure they'd remember me though. Here's <laughs> a great corner. You can just see how the aisles go all the way down here. So they have a big empty floor and they just divide it up into the different stalls. That's it. You can see. I mean, this. All this the owners have done their own kind of marketing, retailing mm -hmm. landscape up front, the service scape. And you can see it's just beautiful, isn't it? It's just so flexible here. You know, you want to change this into one big stall, you just knock the two together. You want to eradicate all these stalls in the middle, you just knock them down. It's so easy. It's just a few pillars. You know, this is the Chinese flexibility. So you've just got a building. It looks like a store. In fact, one of the great things to come and see is when they take it all down in the evening, they're packing in the evening. Oh, so they, each stall packs up their stuff. That's right. They all pack up. They all put it inside. They put the shutters up or some sort of closing. Some guys just wrap down some fabric, you know. They're not too worried about com people coming in. And they just roll down a fabric layer over the front, cover it all up. But I tell you, it looks so different. You know, now the decoration comes from all this product hanging down. You know, I mean, we're just right here as you're panning around, Clyde, you can see all these suits up here. You turn a little bit further and you see all these leather jackets just hanging down here, layer upon layer. Underneath it's some ugly board. But right on the top you've got all these leather jackets. It's so they use drawers. the product as the product the is the decoration, totally. the service scale. Something we see a lot in Taiwan and Hong yeah. Kong where you just lay out the product to cover up the <laughs> <laughs> What's actually the walls and things like that. That's right, Even true. in the hypermarkets you can see it where you just use the product to cover up the 
walls and you the product becomes an your decoration. Inch. You don't waste an inch. You really don't. In fact, I must. Uh, we're going to do a show soon, of course, on Vietnam. That'll be very interesting. And they've got that same approach. You no know, layer upon layer. The market there was really tall, so they had almost two meters at each stall laid up of uh, people's uh, each, you know, units products laid right up to the ceiling. Like two meters, they'd have these long sticks. You'd say, I want to see that product. They'd like pull it down. So here they, you know, they use poles to pull down what you want to see. Real friendly, real helpful. But as I say, if you're not too interested in buying, it's over. <laughs> yeah, you've got to come here with the purpose of specifically in this case wanting to have some cloth, leather, silk. That's it. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. how much of this can they actually make from scratch for you? And how much of this is like people coming and buying supplies? Like, are, is everyone coming here to get a, a clothes made, or are some people coming here to get supplies? Here, yeah. shops. My impression, just observation. I mean, this this lady on the right, maybe will just buy some fabric, I guess. Looking at her, but I guess these are more the locals that are coming here now. I've only seen one uh, foreign here here this morning. But if you come in the afternoon, you'll be packed out with tourists. These are the people that are going to buy and so make. So foreign tourists. Yeah. And they'll order a suit to be made up. Yeah, that's right. Like a suit dress, this sort of exactly. thing. Yes, exactly. And how much time are we talking about if you want to get a suit made, in case any of our viewers are thinking they're coming over? <laughs> well, you're talking, I was thinking the tailoring I had done, in fact, probably this store just in front here. Hello. Hello, Neha was done in about three days. Is this really had something done before? Yes, that's right. I'm not sure it's the same store, but we'll keep going around. So. Thank you. It's yeah, so those right guys, you can touch it, you can feel it. You can, you can look at the styles and then, of course, you know, maybe that's not a style you like and what they do so is they long? just... How long did it take you? It took me three, three days. Three days. That's right, and that included a uh, first fitting as well. So they took the measurements, came back, I slipped it on, it's a little bit rough, it's got the lining tacked in, this sort of thing. And then they, they use the chillers talk and they mark it out and they see where the changes need to be made. And then you pop back, you make sure you're happy with it. And you know, they still, there were a couple of bits I wasn't quite happy with. They whipped it away, we went, went, went away. An hour later, came back and it was looking real nice. So. I just love the way this kind of thing comes out. Your whole service scape is just pushed out to the front. Yeah, it's lovely, isn't it? I mean, look at the number of products you've got there. You can just really just pull out anything that you want to see, anything you want to touch. It's just right there in front of you. And they're super accommodating as well, you know? They're not going to tell you, oh, you can't put X with Y. I wanted a silk lining in this jacket I have now. My made. problem, James, would be I come in here and I want something, but I have no idea about clothes, you know. I have no idea about No problem, here. Hi, just get there. Look at that. A couple of magazines there. You don't know what you want. You'll start flipping through there. They'll say, how about this one? And then you start to have a look, you know, just like this. Here. You've got this guy, look, a little model here. You flip over the page, another guy with a, a completely different style. You say I want flip that. over again. Here they are, different tailored gotcha. styles. To say, hey Clyde, hey, so do you how like about that one? Or you, <laughs> you say, look, I want something like this. Bam, no problem. Kind of like going to a Japanese restaurant with yeah, the Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and you say, I don't like any of this. No, no, no problem. Here's another one. We'll just open this one, you know. Okay, I got you. Yeah, it's like a Japanese I'm, restaurant. You just point and say, hey, this is the style I want. This, this is, is I want something very similar to this. And then, of course, then they go into the customization. Do you want it long? Do you want it short? Mm -hmm. Do you want turn ups on your trousers and all this kind of thing? So it's really, really neat. So, no problem for a customer like you. You come in and you say, I'm not sure what I want. They've got the answer. And if you go to some stores, well, it'll say Dax, or it'll say D&G, or it'll say one of these brands in the picture. So you're basically participating in the whole knockoff market. <laughs> so you want your Armani, you just bring the design. These guys are going to make it for you. And as long as you choose a nice place, you're probably going to get something where the quality is pretty nice. That's interesting. We went down to the uh, riverfront, which is all under construction for the mm. expo, but uh, Armani's uh, store is right down there. Is it? Yeah. So there you are. So I just come here instead. You just get online. I was, all, I was Print all lined off a couple of pages, you know. Armani, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Print off instead. a couple of pages, just bring them around here. But it's the details. You know, they'll put the fabric together. The cutting will probably be quite good. You have to watch a little bit of the detailing to make sure the fit is nice. That's all doable, but it's the details. You know, you better test out your zips, for example. They'll put in some dodgy old zip, 
after a couple of months it'll stop closing. So you need to be real clear, look I want YKK or a brand. Of course you don't know that you're going to get YKK, but you can feel whether it's going to work, whether it's going to last. The same with buttons, this sort of thing. You need to check down to that level of detail that you're getting kind of something that looks quality, feels quality. And then you'll end up with something that's pretty nice. But you can't hope that the zip will be nice, that the press studs will be nice, that the buttons are going to be good quality. You need to come feel, say exactly what button you're going to use. I want to see it. You can even ask to take a sample away. They'll just build up a sheet. They'll give you an, a receipt for what material, what fabric you've had, what your choices are. They'll cut a snippet off. They'll give it to you on the sheet. If you want to specify other things, they'll write it on there. Often they'll write it in English so you can see it as well. And that's a great way to make sure your communication is smooth. And then you come back and you can make sure everything's lining up. So they work to help you get the right thing. They work to avoid communication problems because they know they're going to end up with an angry customer and someone you know, mouthing off, not paying. That's their downside risk. They try and minimize that. So it turns out pretty good usually. But as I say, you have to be patient quality-wise. Great. So that's a little walk into the store. If uh, you want to come take a look with us, please come over. It's a real nice little visit to our silk market here. This is Talk of Asian Marketing with a special emphasis on localized Chinese consumer behavior. Our website is ccc.qbook.tv where you can find other audio and video episodes with photos, links, and information related to today's conversation. Subscribe to leave comments and access research episodes with applied topics and research reports.